let's take a look at how this uh, comes out in code. So there are lots of changes here. We have two new interfaces. The first one is the subscriber interface. And a subscriber interface has one method. It's called change edge. And it says it's, it's number to void. And the effect is to record the new right edge. So a subscriber is anybody who's willing to receive a change edge message. And a publisher, again, has one, is an interface with one method called subscribe. It takes a subscriber and it adds a new subscriber. It adds a new guy to the list of people to be notified whenever something interesting happens, whenever, in this case, whenever an edge changes. Container is unchanged. Now Box is going to be a publisher. He is going to be a guy who sends these edge changed methods. So he's a publisher, which means he is going to uh, need a, um, a subscribe method. He's going to have a field called subscribers, initially empty. And this is, uh, in fact, a list of subscriber. OK. What is the what is the publisher going to do when he receives a subscribe method? Well, subscribe method will have an argument which is a subscriber, and he's going to add the subscriber to the list of subscribers. Just like we added objects uh, before, we just add uh, a new object to the subscription list. Another this is now, I've done this as a function, but it could be a method called publish. Takes a number. Again, its result is void. It's done for effect. And it publishes the value. It pushes the value to all of the subscribers. So what are we going to do? We're going to take each obj in subscribers, and we are going to send that object a change edge method. So whenever we change our some value, and here I've used W for value, I'm not quite sure why. Because W, I don't want, want you to confuse that with the field W. All right, so we'll give it a different name so you won't get confused. Whenever we have a value, which according to our contract is supposed to be a number, we will send that object, we will send that value to each of the objects in the subscribers list. We will send that, we, but we'll do that by calling change edge of val on each of the subscribers. Okay. Right. Boxes don't respond to ticks, they don't respond to keys. Uh, on mouse, uh, well, same thing happens, right, just as before, but what happens in adjust width? Well, whenever we adjust the width, we change the value of x, we change the value of w, and now we publish the value of the new right edge. So here in this version, we publish the new right edge to the subscribers, which we do by calling the function publish. Here's our ball. Balls are now going to be stateful. Right. Balls have to be stateful because they are registering. They have identity so that the, um, so that the box can find them to send the messages. 
So they are going to implement the stateful, wor stateful world obj interface. They will also implement the subscriber interface. They are willing to receive messages. Instead of asking the box for the left and right edge every time, we are going to have local fields called right edge and left edge. They are going to be initialized by asking the box. All right, so the first time round, when we create the ball, right, we know what box it's in. So we ask the box for its right edge and left edge, and that way we initialize our local fields, right edge and left edge. We do our super new thing. And now, as part of our initialization, we say, we register with the box. We say, box! Here, box. Box, box. Nice box. Okay. Please, whenever you change your edge, please let me know. And that's what this call to subscribe accomplishes. What object? Remember, subscribe... What kind of an argument is subscribe going to supposed to take? Subscribe is supposed to take as an argument a subscriber. So when the ball subscribes to these changed edged messages, what subscriber is it going to send? It's going to send itself. This. Please subscribe this ball to the messages. And now, I'm a ball. What am I going to do when I receive a change edge message? The change edge message signifies that the box that I am in, the box that I have subscribed to, has changed its edge, and therefore changed its right edge to that value. So I am going to set my right edge field, my local right edge field, to this new value n. Well, let's see. On mouse and on tick uh, now return void, because these are stateful objects. So I just set bang x and y, and here I have a selected field that has to be set. Before, I used to return a new ball with a new value of x, a new value of y, the old value of speed, the old value of box, and a new value of selected, huh? So now I just change the values of x, y, and selected. Before, over here, I was returning a new ball in which selected, huh, was false. Now I just set bang selected, huh, to false. Right. And Again, systematically, whenever I, whenever I used to have new ball, I replace that by a bit of code that simply changes the appropriate field or fields. New ball. It's, new ball gets changed. Speed gets changed. So... Right, new ball with x get x is changed and speed is changed, so now we just change x and speed. And similarly for place at left edge. Okay, now right, so this is the same transformation we did before. But now Excuse me. Here's where we get to, to use that local information that we have subscribed to updates for. Right. We used to send box right edge. Now we just use the local field right edge. Right. And because the box lets us know every time it changes its right edge field, we can be confident that this right that our local right edge field is up to date. And similarly for our left edge. So let's try running this. There we are. 
By the way, in this version, I made the ball draggable. Again, that's another thing that you guys have done many times. Oops. Drag the balls back, 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 back. There you go. Nice balls. Okay. Again, when I hit an N, the new ball should appear somewhere, should appear at the middle of the box. And it does. Okay, so there is our working code using a push model 